Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Kai Droid. Kai was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of the, really, this is a neat drone. This is the SG907 Max version. Now, there is another version out there, the SG907 Pro, which has a smaller battery on only a two axis gimbal. This is an improved version over the Pro. And I'll, I'll go over those improvements here shortly. Um, two of the biggest ones being this has, this is a three axis gimbal and a much larger battery for longer flight time. But let's go over the, the Max, the 907 Max. Um, it is a smaller drone, okay, uh, smaller than normal for what you would expect at, at this size or this price range here. Normally these are a little bit larger, a little bit heavier, but this folding drone, let's put it, show you, fold it down. It's relatively small, as I said here. Unfortunately, it still weighs 309 grams. Okay, so that means it weighs more than 350 grams, and it does require registration in most countries. But they're, they're getting close here with this one. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll have the ones coming out right and left under 250 grams um, with all the bells and whistles like this one supposedly has. Let me go over those, some of those bells and whistles. First off, let's start off. It has brushless motors. These are uh, 1503 1700 kV motors on this particular drone for improved durability over, say, a brush motor drone. Um, it does include GPS with automatic return to home capability, return to home and landing capability on loss of signal, on command, and on low voltage. Uh, it is powered. Now, I mentioned the difference being between this and the Pro. This is a larger battery than what the Pro has. This SG906 Max has a 7.6 volt, 2600 milliamp hour battery is stated here. I believe the Max only has an 1800 uh, milliamp hour. So this gives it extended flight flight time over the um, Pro version. Um, they're predicting flight times up to about 25 minutes of flight time for this uh, drone with that, uh, this small drone with that large battery. Now, I mentioned mentioned the gimbal on this. This does have a three-axis gimbal, three-axis stabilized gimbal um, to provide uh, stabilized uh, video from the drone. Um, also, it records video from a micro S to a micro SD card slot right there on the belly. Now, I got to say one thing though: this card reader that's on for this drone is very finicky, <laughs> okay? I tried using 32 gigabyte card. Uh, I, well, I start with 64 gigabyte. I wasn't surprised it didn't work with that. But then I tried a 32 gig, some 32 gigabyte cards. It didn't like that. It wasn't until I got down to 16 gigabyte that it was finally happy. So what am I telling you folks is, what I'm inferring is this card writer on here is a rather older version that doesn't seem to understand larger size cards like 32 gigabyte. It should understand 32, it shouldn't have had a problem, but it didn't like it. So again, I had to use a 4 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte, then it had no problem with the card. So keep that in mind if you purchase this and your card doesn't work, try a smaller size card and it just might work. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Oh, while we're under, on the belly here, I forgot to mention here, in addition to GPS, this also has optical flow. The Max version has an optical flow sensor right here for uh, indoor flying. If you wish to fly this indoors, it will automatically be able to maintain a hover position by looking directly beneath the drone and using that what it sees to help maintain its position. Um, this also would come into play if you lost uh, GPS signal while out flying uh, or you run into problems with the GPS you know, and switch to um, non-GPS mode by the press of the button on the controller. Um, if you're, say it goes into toilet bowl effect and it gets larger and larger and you're starting to lose control of the drone, just turn off the GPS, let the optical flow system take over and then manually fly the drone back to your position and land it. Normally redo a compass calibration if it's doing a uh, toilet bowl effect. Okay, um, let's go back to mentioning the camera. <laughs> let's talk about the camera. Okay, we mentioned that it has card, uh, card writing capability, to the SD card along with this three axis gimbal. Now, the sensor, the image sensor on this, I believe is only 1080p, folks, in that I was only able to record 1080p video to this card here. Um, that was 1920 by 1080p at uh, 30 frames per second I was getting. However, it is advertised with a 2K sensor. 
You know, it's advertised supposedly have a capability of doing 2048 by 1080p. However, I think they were that was what they were planning, but what they actually got <laughs> installed in this turns out to be just a regular 1080p camera. So, however, that camera's not too bad, what I saw. So, let's see how, you know, it looks when we go flying. So, don't hold, hold your judgment off on this camera until we, we see what we get when we go take it flying. Additionally, it is able to take still photos of resolution uh, 3840 by 2160. It's advertised with a 4K capability for still photos of 4096 by 3072. But again, I was only able, what, I, what I'm seeing from the images recorded on this SD card, they're only 3840 by 2160. So keep that in mind. So 1080p and close to 4K still photos from that 1080p video. Um, let's talk about the app now. This uses the XIL Pro app, available on Google Play and iTunes. And with that in mind, this drone requires your phone to have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capability to use that app. Now, not everybody, as I stress always, not everyone has 802.11 AC on their phone. Before purchasing this drone, I strongly suggest that you first verify that your phone indeed is capable of using 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. And the way to do that is just simply Google search your phone's name, model name, along with the terms 802.11 and the term specifications, and see if 802.11 AC shows up in the search results. Okay, that's how you do it. Um, but mentioning that XL, XIL Pro app, with that app, you're able to see the video from this camera on your phone while it is flying. That's FPV video in real time. Additionally, that app will give you the cap advanced capabilities of follow me where this drone will be able to follow you, circle you, circle position, and waypoint flying where you fly points on a map automatically using the app. Okay, now um, predicted ranges for this drone. They're predicting FPV video range of up to 500 meters that you'd be able to see on your phone. More realistically, I would expect around 300 meters, uh, but depending on your phone's um, uh, and Wi-Fi antenna, you can get up to 500 meters with this particular drone. They're also predicting control range with the controller of uh, up to 800 meters. So that means you could fly further than what you can see you know, in terms of video. But keeping in mind that this is recording to a micro SD card, you can still fly out further and record that video while you're flying blind. And at that point, you probably want to hit return to home automatically. Uh, now keep in mind, if you're flying blind, a lot of countries don't let you do that, especially in the U.S. So I would not recommend you fly blind like that. Okay, well, let's go over what you get in the box with this particular drone. You get instruction manuals, and they come in many languages. Uh, we got German, we got uh, French, we got Italian, we got Spanish, we got Japanese, and also in English. So those are the manuals that come with this. You get the drone and its battery. I believe you can also purchase additional spare batteries, up to three. Um, I would recommend you do that if you're considering additional batteries with this drone. Do that at the time of purchase. Have them bundled with the drone because you're going to have a hard time getting them afterwards if you don't get it with the drone because of LiPo shipping restrictions. You also get a cover for the gimbal to protect the gimbal. Um, I forgot to mention on this battery, this battery is charged with a micro USB cable. There's the plug for the micro USB cable. And you use uh, the provided... Uh, Cable, they got a micro USB cable, comes with this, but you want to plug this into a phone wall charger. I would recommend a 2 amp wall charger. Do not try to charge this through your computer or you'll be waiting a couple days to charge this large battery through your computer port. As your computer port just doesn't have a, enough oomph to charge that in a timely manner. Okay, it'll, it's, I believe most computer ports are only 500 milliamp, so that would take quite a bit of time to charge that battery. Uh, you get the obligatory... Uh, micro Phillips screwdriver for changing propeller blades on this particular drone if you ding up the blades and you get spare, a full spare set of props along with more uh, micro Phillips screws <laughs> to put in those props into the, the uh, to change those props and you get the controller okay I had to recheck the manual just to make sure I got these buttons correctly when we go over them but here is the controller first off um, the phone holder on this holds my large phone so they're getting a message out there to 
increase these phone holders so that I can they can hold larger phones than just iPhones, folks. Because most of the time when I get with these, I have to use a rubber band to hold my phone in it. Uh, this time, this one, I don't. You know, it holds my large uh, Armor 6E phone very nicely. Uh, let's go over these antennas real quick. This one is a fake. There's no antenna going up inside it. However, this one is real, folks. It's a real antenna. Uh, this is how they get the 800 meter control range. I recommend while you're flying to keep the flat portion of the antenna pointed toward the drone for maximum range. So if you're holding like this, you know, make sure this, this is always pointing toward the drone to help you get that maximum amount of range. Okay, uh, let's go over the buttons now. On the back, we have these two buttons on the right side. Uh, the inward one is for down control of the gimbal or point the uh, camera lens downward. And the one on the right is for moving the camera lens up. These buttons on the left side of the controller do nothing. Okay, at least in the manual it says they do nothing, so um, keep that in mind. Now let's go over this button here. This is your rates button. If you want to fly faster, uh, you can go for beginner, intermediate, and expert to increase the pitch angle on the drone to make it uh, increase speed. And also, if you hold it down while the drone is on a flat level surface on the ground, not running, <laughs> hold this button down and the drone will do a compass or a gyro calibration. Uh, particularly, that comes into play for uh, flying when you're flying in optical flow mode. That'll help keep the drone steady uh, in hover. Um, it does have automatic return to home by com on command by pressing this button here. So if you lose sight of the drone and you want to bring it back home, press that button and it'll do such. You can take photos uh, with the drone by pressing this button here. And this button here is for starting and stopping videos. Also, if you hold the button down for three seconds, the drone will enter into compass calibration mode so you can do a manual compass calibration of the drone while it's on the ground. Okay. Uh, this button here is for automatic takeoff and automatic landing. For automatic takeoff, I believe you'll need, still need to start the motors, and normally that's done by moving both sticks down and outward like so. And that um, puts the motors into idle. And then press that button and it will do an automatic takeoff. Again, this button here is for turning the GPS off. That is, if you want to fly indoors using the optical flow system, you can press that button. And this button here is for a headless mode. This does have headless mode capability. Press that button. And you can use headless mode for, particularly for doing panning shots. I like to use it for uh, crane shots, where especially up and away crane shots. And I'll try to demonstrate that when we go out in the field. Uh, let's turn this on. The on off switch is on the right here. Let's turn it on here and I'll show you some other things. We have battery power of the drone, battery power of the controller, um, also reception quality of the drone and the drone's reception quality from, of the controller. <laughs> and additionally we have uh, uh, height of the drone distance of the drone, telem telemetry information, height of the drone, distance to the drone, number of satellites we're receiving for the GPS, and if the GPS uh, control is on or off, let's press that see if it, yeah, it doesn't work. Well. Oh, there we go. You hold it. You have to hold this button down to turn off the GPS. You have to hold it down for three seconds. Let's see if it turns back on again. No, it doesn't. So keep in mind, if you do turn the GPS off, you're going to need to restart the drone and land it on the ground and reconnect it to the controller to enter back into uh, GPS mode. But again, this zero here shows the number of satellites we're receiving. You want to wait until you at least have eight satellites before trying to take off. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> you'll be flying without GPS and you will not have automatic return to home and landing. And uh, rates button is tells you right now we're in low rate. Let's see if it's focused. And you can adjust that by pressing that medium. And actually, it's just low and high rate. So beginner and expert rate. And right now we're in mode zero, which is optical flow mode. And if we were, let's turn it back on, see if we can go back to the GPS. It still says mode zero. So I'm not sure what the mode zero is, folks. Uh, I'll look that up. Hold on a sec. Let's see if there's any info in the manual. Hold on. Okay, I looked it up. It said mode zero. <laughs> it means you're not in any mode. Mode one is optical flow. Let's see if we can enter into mode one. Turning on the drone. Turning on the controller, and there it goes into mode one. So we're right now in optical flow mode. And then when we get eight s satellites connected, when this goes up to eight, it'll automatically switch to GPS mode, and that mode one will change to mode two, telling us that we are definitely 
in uh, ready to go to fly and we're in GPS mode. So wait until that mode one switches to mode two before even attempting to take off in GPS mode. Okay, again, if mode two, that means you're in GPS mode. Okay, that is the SG907 Max. Um, very capable drone on paper. Let's take it out in the field and see how it actually performs. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here on a beautiful but somewhat breezy day here at uh, Pleasant Ridge Park. We've got a wind here about 7 to 8 miles per hour, I'm guessing. Uh, but we're going to see how this, well this flies in the wind. Okay, the 908. Uh, to start this up, all we need to do is press and hold the top button until we hear the um, ESCs chirp. And then we put it on the ground on a flat level surface. And let its gyros calibrate. And... Um, we should be good there. And then turning on the transmitter. And making sure we are connected. And you can tell if we're connected by looking down here and seeing if you got the battery bars showing from the drone. Okay, first thing we need to do while we're connected is do the, do the compass calibration. To do that, we press and hold the camera button for about three seconds till we hear a beep. And pick up the drone. And notice that its lights are flashing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we do rotations like so until we hear another beep. Okay, heard that beep from the controller. So we go vertically like so and do some more until we hear another beep. Now you need to do this with all GPS drones, folks. There we go. Recommend doing it before each flight for all GPS drones. That's a compass calibration and it's important for stability of the drone uh, when flying in GPS mode. Okay, next thing I need to do now is connect my, the drone's Wi-Fi signal to my phone and then open the app. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, this is the XL Pro app available on Google Play and iTunes. And we're going to hit Start Play. We already did the calibration, so we don't need to do those calibrations. And we're going to pay attention and get no closer than three meters to the airplane. Okay, <laughs> so. Okay, we're set to go. We actually have 14 satellites, GPS mode as the app shows here, and it's saying mode 2 on the controller, so everything's good to go here. Let's start the video recording by pressing the video button and making sure we see the numbers showing up here. Before I do that, I'm going to stop the video and hit the photos one more time just to make sure we're recording. And it'll, If you see saving HD photos, you know that the card is recording. So, starting the video camera one more time, and starting the motors by down and out, and pressing automatic takeoff. And checking the stability of the drone. Getting into the camera, syncing up the cameras, and saying, I like my shirt today, folks. Okay, so we see the wind is bouncing it about a bit, around a bit, but the, um, the image stability looks pretty good on the uh, my phone, although I do am seeing lag of about a second. There's about a second lag showing up here. Okay. Let me put my camera, or my, not my goggles, putting on my glasses and setting it up and away and see how it does. So, going up a bit and hot, hot bump at the same time. It flies rather slow, but again, it's going into the wind right now. And looking at my FPV, the FPV signal looks nice and smooth. flies rather smoothly. <laughs> Everything is smooth about this drone. It's actually doing a nice job. How high am I? 20 meters? Let's go up a bit higher, up to about 30 meters. So you can at least see Lake Erie. Let's see if we can get to the road here. And I'm pointing my um, antenna toward the drone. I don't know if that's going to help or not. And right, I'm going to stop it right there because I want to lower the gimbal just a tad. So I can see the road a little bit better. And then push it forward again. Heading toward the road. Distance, it says 80 meters. That road is about 180 meters. Let's see if we can get there. And did I lose signal here? Let me turn to the right. Yeah, apparently I've lost FPV signal there, folks. Okay, I gained it back here for a second. Going forward again. Pushing forward. Okay, I do have FPV signal. It's just that it's so steady that I 
I thought I lost it. Oh, I am losing it every once in a while there. 145 meters. I can still see that drone. And 168. Okay, we're, we should be at the edge of the road right about now. And stopping it right there. Let's see if I can turn it back toward me again. I'm going to turn the drone. Okay, I can see it turning, so the FPV is working. It's just very smooth. <laughs> but choppy at the same time. <laughs> okay, from that position there, let's do automatic return to home and landing, folks. So I'm going to press that button. Automatic return to home. Let's see what it does. It's, is it rising or is it flying back to me? It's flying back to me. It's coming back rather fast, too. So let me get away from the pad. Let's see how close it does this automatic return to home and landing. Slow it down now. I can see it. I'm stepping back from the pad to see how close this is. See it up in the sky. I'm not holding, <laughs> I'm not controlling it, as you can see here. And we're gonna see how close its return to home is. Okay, now it seems to be turning back to its original direction and it should start descending here shortly. There it goes. Now I'm not gonna let it come all the way to the ground, folks. I'm gonna press that button before it touches down because I want to continue flying. We'll see how close it is. It seems to be actually rather close. Almost like it's gonna touch it. <laughs> touch the pad, so there it is. Not too bad. Stopping it at right there. Right over the pad. So very accurate return to open landing. Going back up again. Now let's stop that video recording right there. I'm taking a picture. I didn't tell him to take a picture. <laughs> but let's stop the video recording. Now I wanted to take a picture. Let's take a picture. Okay. Okay, one. One more. Save the HD card. And one more. So that's its camera. Let's try the advanced flight control features now, folks. Uh, we're going to go over here in, in the upper right corner. Second one down is to follow me. And we're going to do GPS follow me, which is the third one down. It looks like a controller. Let's go up a bit higher, too. And pressing that button. And follow me is activated. Now it seems to push itself back a bit there. Gives itself a little bit of distance between you and it. So let's see it follow. Oh, by the way, let's start the video recording one more time. Video recording has started. Syncing up the cameras. <laughs> and going for a walk. Let's see how this follow me works. Follow, follow. It's following. What about if I walk over this way? And I walk over this way. And I'm going to start walking toward it. I'm going to see, will it recognize that I'm walking toward it? And when will it recognize it? And it seems to recognize it now. It's moving away. So, this does work well as a follow me drone. <laughs> Sick up one more tab. As you can see, it's falling rather nicely. This is actually not a bad drone, folks. So far, what I'm seeing, it's actually a nice drone. Um, I think the price is reasonable, too, on this particular drone. So there we go. That's the follow me. Next thing we need to try is circle position. So coming out of follow me, follow me is stopped. Let's see if I can bring it over toward me. going up above me a bit and let's hit going up a little higher actually and let's hit circle position and which is orbit and submit and it climbs and it turns itself this is where it was and it goes over there still recording let's lower the gimbal and now it's circling now can I adjust the height of this circle. Yeah, I can. So I can show myself in the circle. It's sinking up the cameras. Now it goes up and down with the wind. Let's come down a little lower because it's using a barometer to uh, measure its 
altitude down. No, I want it to go up. Up, up. Can I increase the speed of rotation? Yeah, you can. By pushing the lift on the control stick, you can increase the speed of rotation. So as you can see there, it's now rotating rapidly. Can we adjust the radius of rotation? Let's push outward. And yes, you can. You can make bigger circles by pushing outward on the right stick. Let's go up a bit higher too, since that's working. And raising up the gimbal. So, circle position works well. Everything's working well. Let's try uh, waypoints next. <laughs> I'm curious if the waypoints are going to work. That'd be cool. So, we're going to come out of circle position now. Stop it. And there we go. Let's bring it over closer. And put it right there. Lowering it a bit. Actually, not a bad drone so far, what I'm seeing. Okay, the next one here, uh, I want to stop that video recording and restart it. Restarting. Coming down a bit. Syncing up the camera. This is the camera sync. Let's try waypoints. Waypoints. Waypoint selection. I feared sometimes everything works most of these drugs, but sometimes waypoints can be a problem and it appears to be a problem because there's I can't center it on our position. Okay, there's no means to center position. So waypoints is the issue. <laughs> the single issue that I can see with this. Because again, where is the drone and where is my position so I can put it down? It won't center. There's no center selection on the map. So, uh, we're going to have to come out of waypoints and forget about waypoints. So, for the remainder of this flight, let's do the follow me one more time. I'm going to get in the picture and move out a bit. And we'll try follow me some more. People like follow me a lot. And follow. Let's have a closer look at follow me. Sinking up. So, apparently, I guess this is the closest you can get to it while in follow me. It maintains a, a distance from you, but again, you, this could be used for nature walks or if you send it up high, I guess you, it'll follow you on your uh, bicycle or whatever, but you're going to need to bring the phone. It is following the phone. Now, it also has the capability of doing uh, following uh, optically, but to do that, you need to put the drone in optical mode, or not optical mode, uh, uh, yeah, optical flow mode. And uh, I'm not gonna do that, folks. I'm, I'm really, when I take it out here, I'm testing the GPS. Maybe I'll, hold on, hold on, let's try that. Let's come out of this, come back toward us. Let's try optical flow mode. Since this does have optical flow, let's plop it here. And I am going to turn the GPS off, folks. Let's see what happens. Holding down the GPS button. Uh, I didn't want it to turn off. We're still in mode 2. Pressing in again. Huh. Apparently you can't turn it off once it's in GPS mode. I'm holding that button down. Can I do it in the, on the controller using the app? No. So I was wrong, folks. This does, apparently, you can't turn it off once you're in the air, once you're flying in GPS mode. It stays in GPS mode. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, a, that's something good to know. Okay. Well, let's try uh, one other thing I want to try. Let's go back over here. Give me a little distance here. And then point it back to me. Going up a bit higher. Now, does this have, I'm looking for, uh, headless mode. Yeah, it does have headless mode. Let me lower that gimbal. Down. And going into headless mode. That's a way. And let's try it. A crane shot. The 
river flows, flows to the sea. <laughs> I love crane shots. Yeah, let's bring it back in. Reverse crane shot. Flying FPV, trying to keep myself in the center here. Pushing forward, forward. Trying to keep myself in the center of the picture. <laughs> there it is. Okay, next thing, let's try coming out of headless mode. Let's lower that gimbal all the way down. Get, a, get above it. Straight under it. That gimbal comes all the way down, folks. Let's try this. rocket. That worked well. <laughs> so, go ahead and push it back up again. And me the gimbal back up again. Gimbal's back up. So, all in all, what I'm seeing with this drone, I like it. I like it a lot. Going forward. Everything. Yeah, let's, let's take it over here in the center. Okay, I can see Lake Erie today. Beautiful day. I can see it very clearly. Let's take a do a loop around the area, showing how the camera changes. Okay, give it a little right turn. Turn too quickly, slowing it down a bit. Let's try that again. The right turn, and that's Lake Erie. Okay, coming back down, reducing throttle. Go to that side of the field, and I'm going to turn it to the left. And there's my van over there. Let's head toward that. And coming down, reducing throttle. Oh, there's my wife and dog over there doing a walk. Let's let's go see them. So everything seems to work with this drone except fault or waypoints. And waypoints, I don't know. I wish the manufacturers would get it right so it works <laughs> properly with Google Maps. But a lot of them don't. I don't know what the issue is. But there's my wife and dog. Let's go say hi to them over there. Where'd they go? They're hiding. They're hiding under that tree, getting closer. The FPV is working excellent with this. Okay, let's let's go over here a bit. I'm gonna stop right there so I don't hit the tree. Uh, okay, I can see the branches. Let's come down a little lower. Dang, this is working excellent. I, yeah, I really like this drone. <laughs> it's a, it's actually might be a keeper if, if the video comes out fine. Oops, overshot. One of the things is there is some dead space with uh, the control on in terms of yaw. You have to give it quite a bit. But uh, there's my wife and dog. Let's pitch to the right a bit. And right there, we lost some FPV. FPV's getting somewhat choppy. She's waving. <laughs> Went to high rate. I don't want to go to high rate. Okay, so let's turn it around. Turn it back toward me. We're going to go to high rate and then do a high speed pass by me. Let's try that. Still recording. There I am. Going to high rate and giving a full pitch. Full pitch forward. Coming toward me. High-speed pass. Not a bad drone at all, huh? I like it. I like this drone. The size is just right. You know, if only they could get this under 250 grams, it would be an excellent drone. <laughs> I like it. Okay, um, let's bring it down. And over. Make sure we got that video. Oh, 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 there we go. It's low battery. 
So now I got a feeling we're stuck within 20 meter circle. So let me stop the video and restart it. Actually, sync up the cameras and stop the video and then restart the video. And yeah, let's give me my thoughts. Get the sun in my face. Actually, let's, let's not get the sun. Now let's get the sun on my right side of my face. Yeah. I want you to see the drone. So I went out. <laughs> I like my shirt again, folks. And again, um, not a bad drone. Everything seems to work. Yeah, let's get the sun in my face. <laughs> Everything seems to work except uh, waypoints. I'm looking at the uh, screen. I'm seeing a lot of white. You know, there is some you know dynamic ranges off a little bit because uh, I wonder if you can adjust that though. Let's see. I haven't tried anything adjustments in the camera adjustments. I'm not sure it does have camera adjustments on this. Yeah. If there is, it's probably in the settings, the open, opening settings. But again, uh, circle position worked well. Uh, follow me worked well with the drone. Only waypoints didn't work. Uh, the two axis or the three axis stabilized gimbal seems to be working well. There is some dead space on the yaw. Here, let's show that. Well, there it's. No, I guess I'm wrong. It's working. <laughs> it's just maybe that was the FPV I was noticing. There was probably some uh, delay in the FPV. I just didn't notice that. But again, everything seems to work with this. So I hope that the video recording is coming out nicely. I hope the photos are coming out nicely. It's being bounced around right now by the wind, as you can see there. It's holding its position in that wind. So it is a, a breezy day flyer. It can fly in the, in the wind. Uh, but again, that is this, not too bad. I like this drone. So let's let's fly it around now um, in high rate. Let's bounce into the. Let's see if it does have a geofence. I didn't check that yet. So I'm going to high rate, high rate, and pushing forward. Let's see if we bounce into geofence at 20 meters away. Going up a higher just in case we don't bump into anything. And we're 17, 20 meters. Yeah. So it does have geofence restrictions. Let's go the other way. Bounce into the wall on the other side here. I'm going to walk over to this geofence. And I want to demonstrate that to you. It's going to hit that geofence 20 meters away. And then turning it around again toward me. Let's see the geofence in the, wall, in the air. Now, what a geofence is, it's a, imagine a invisible uh, fence in the air that your drone will not fly past. Um, imagine a circle 20 meters in diameter or radius around its takeoff position. And right now, while it's in low battery, with the drone there, it, it, it just hit it right now. It won't go any further. I'm giving it a forward pitch, and it just won't go outside of that circle. Let me try it again. I'll, we'll go off over here, come down a little lower, and show that to you again. Turning back toward me. And the idea is, when you're low battery, they want to bring it in close so that you don't... Here, watch. There, it hits the wall. Can't fly further than 20 meters from its takeoff point. And the idea, again, is it doesn't want to run out of... Uh, if you're out 100 meters, 200 meters away, that's too far for the drone to be able to return. But if you're within only, within only 20 meters away and then you hit low battery point, um, then it can easily make it back home and land without... Uh, crashing without running out of power so we're down to 7.14 volts um, syncing up one more time 7.14 volts when a drone gets down to 7.0 that's where I'm guessing the return to home is going to occur most drones at 3.5 volts per cell since this is a two, two cell battery most drones uh, return to home 3.5 times 2 is 7 and <laughs> that's when this is probably going to return so with that in mind let's go up one more time get a view of the area. Let's see if there's any altitude restriction while we're in low battery. Yep, yeah, about 20 meters. Can't go higher than 23 meters. 22 meters. Well, it's going to bring it down to 20. So 20 meters seems to be the altitude restriction while you're in low power. So I'm going to rotate around the area. Showing the camera one more time. 
There's the grass cutter. I thought he was going to cut the grass here today, but he's not. I hope I'm not disturbing him. Showing the area. And we're just almost at 7.0 volts. So not a bad drone. Not a bad drone at all. I like it. Um, again, now some of you might have again, problems again with the SD card like I mentioned. The SD card writer on this seems to be an old one that only recognizes up to 16 gigabytes. I had problems with 32 gigabyte cards. It shouldn't have had a problem with 32, but it did. So that means <laughs> this is a real old writer on this particular drone. I guess they did that to keep the cost down. Uh, I went through about some of my best cards and my good cards didn't work. You know, the class 10, 32 gigabytes didn't work with this, but the uh, cheap four gigabyte and the cheap uh, 16 gigabyte uh, class six cards had no problem. <laughs> so, you know, what can I say? <laughs> they got an old card reader in here. And again, they did that probably just to keep the cost down. So one more time, let's take a look at the drone, see if I can get a thumbnail. couple thumbnails. Let's turn it this way. It's going to head back over there any second now. We're almost at 7.0 volts. There we go. 7.0 volts. <laughs> I'm not doing that, folks. This is its final return to home and landing. Final return to home and landing. How high does it climb? Now the reason it's climbing is it's to avoid any obstacles on the way as it goes on its way back. But again, it's only 20 meters away from its takeoff point, so I don't see what the need for them to have done this. It's probably to avoid you too on the ground, you know, if it's, you're in the way of it as it's going towards its takeoff point. Okay, let's see how close its final landing is. And with that in mind, let me get my bag out of the way, my UAV bag. Moving it. And we'll see how close this final landing is. Not too bad. About a meter, meter and a half, two meters, two meters I'd say. For the final. And there it is, cutting the grass. And let me stop the video. Video recording is stopped. So, not a bad drone on this one. Uh, the SG, what is it, 907 MAX, yeah, there you go, SG 907 MAX, not a bad drone at all, let me get my sun, the sun in my face, um, I kind of like it, folks, hope you enjoy it, too, I uh, hope you enjoyed the flight, this is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again, hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel, it's real simple, just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe and also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button that way you get notified when i release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shot out so give it a try folks